everyone, Claw Land here, and you're watching another episode of Left Hand Reviews, and today we have a special Kickstarter preview for Antediluvian Wars Extermination. Antediluvian Wars was developed by Andreas Props, who also developed one of my favorite card games, Elemental Clash. In Antediluvian Wars, this is a two to four player battle game where each player is acting as a god, protected by guardians, and they are using their godly powers to construct buildings to generate resources, and they use those resources to deploy units and to play events. Each player is going to be attacking each other, trying to eliminate the opposing gods, and the last one standing wins. Antediluvian Wars is a fully developed game ready for Kickstarter, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. So let's dive into what you get in your Kickstarter pledge of Antediluvian Wars. I'm going to show you briefly how it plays. I'm not going to go too far in depth. I'll save that for the review after the final game comes out. So let's take a look at it, and hopefully from this you'll be able to decide if Antediluvian Wars Extermination is worth your pledge. What you'll get in a copy of Antediluvian Wars Extermination is this nice rule book here, which has plenty of examples and full uh, color pictures. You're also going to get four different decks. So like I said, this is a two to four player card battle game and with one box you have everything you need for four players to play. No need for each person to purchase their own copy. You're ready and raring to go with only one uh, box, which is really, really great. Each uh, deck here is pre-constructed. You're going to have your god here, which has a godly power and divine intervention, which is kind of a one-time use superpower. And then you're going to have a deck of all your cards. Now, in this prototype version, all the cards have uh, for each faction have the same image, but uh, that'll be changed. That's part of the Kickstarter funding. Um, but uh, regardless, this artwork is really, I mean, really nice. It just gives you a good preview of what it's going to look like when the uh, final game comes out. Now, what's unique about this game is each card has three different functions. If you look at the top of the card, you can see that this is the Lemurian Hierophant, and it costs three of this particular resource, which is the Mage's Guild, to bring into play. And it talks a little bit about the abilities of this uh, unit here. It has a dispatch ability, which means it does something when it comes into play. It has an attack of four, and so on and so forth. But, if you flip the card over, you can see that there's some other text here. This is called Ascension. It costs one resource of the Mage's Guild, and it has some text here which is an event. So when you play these cards, you can play them either as the unit or play them as the event. And they're going to have different costs and obviously different abilities, which is really, really neat. It's a, it allows you to have a relatively small deck, um, but still have a ton of different options while you play. Finally, the third purpose is you'll see when you turn the card sideways, you have one of the resource symbols. And when you play a card this way, you play it as a building that generates that particular resource. Also, when you play this as a unit, you'll see this unit's strength is 4. When a unit takes a hit, it becomes wounded, and you turn the unit sideways. And now you'll see it has a different strength value, a strength of 1. Some units, their strength will go up when they're damaged. Some units, their strength will go down. And once the, a, a wounded unit is damaged again, they are removed from play and put in the discard pile. So essentially, each unit has two hit points. So here's an in-process game, which I'm just going to give you a brief glimpse of how Antediluvian Wars Extermination works. So here, the, we see the player's god here. We have three guardians, which are protecting the god. Those essentially uh, absorb damage. Um, if there are no guardians to absorb hits, then the god will take damage directly, and one hit, and he's dead. Then here, we have our building row. These are our buildings that are producing our resources. You stack them here, and whatever the topmost resource is, is what that stack produces. So this particular stack um, is producing three factory because of the, the red factory um, resources on top. This one here is producing two wilderness because of the green wilderness is on top. Okay, then we have our support row. These are uh, creatures that cannot necessarily attack, or units that cannot attack, but they're sitting in the support row. And then we have our front row, which is our front lines, our units that are going to be attacking. And then you can see the uh, opponent here has the same uh, same idea. They have four guardians. They have three different stacks, and you can you can split your stacks up, uh, your resource building stacks, however you like. They only have one in the support row, and they have two units in the front row. Basically, on your turn, 
player is going to move anything from their building stacks um, that were played last turn, put them into the support row, they're going to draw a card, add it to their hand, and then they're going to play the cards however they choose. So for example, if, if I wanted to play this particular card, I could play the Hyperborean Fire Spitter Squad, which costs one of the factory resource, or I could play Flame Wave Event, which costs two of the factory resource. So I'm going to play the Flame Wave Event. It costs me two. I have a stack that bruises two, so I'm going to place it on there, and that immediately is going to resolve, which says deal two damage to each unit in play. So that's going to deal two damage to each unit. The way you determine if uh, damage wounds a unit is that you look at the damage value of each unit. In this case, it's a 3 because it's unwounded. And if the damage value is equal or exceeds it, it would be wounded. The 2 does not wound that one. This one is 2, so it's going to become wounded. This one is 3, so it's not wounded. But that also is going to affect everything in the support row. So let's see, wounded, wounded, and here, wounded, wounded, wounded. Okay? Then, uh, also during this main phase, you can attack. So if I wanted to attack, people uh, from my front row would normally attack uh, the opponent's units in their front row. If there's no one in their front row, I'll, I will attack their support row. And if there's no one in their support row, then I will attack their guardians. And once the guardians are gone, like I mentioned before, I'll attack the god directly. As soon as the god takes a hit, he is dethroned and you win. Or rather, that player is eliminated if you are playing with more than two players. Now there are all sorts of awesome special abilities, um, such as flying, which will allow you to uh, skip over certain rows. There's ranged attacks. Um, there's special abilities that will happen when you deploy units onto the board. There's attacks when they leave play, um, called dismiss events, and so on and so forth. But that just gives you a brief overview of how this works. It's a very fast-paced game. It's going to go back and forth very quickly. Um, this is a very, very full table right now. A lot of times it doesn't even get this full before you end up defeating your opponent, which is really cool. Also, there's kind of a built-in time mechanism that if you happen to run out of all the cards in your deck and you have to draw an additional card, then you will lose automatically. So you need to be quick. You can't dilly-dally in Antediluvian Wars. In addition, I also mentioned the gods a little bit earlier. Each one has a godly power, which is an ongoing effect. Um, in this case... I have factory cards in your hand cost one less to play, whereby the minimum cost is one. That's anything that has this uh, the red factory symbol. And it has a divine intervention, which says uh, Ragnarok, slay all units in play. So if I wanted to use that, I would flip this over. All units, including my own and my opponents, would be destroyed. I flip him over, but you can see that now the godly power is deactivated. So it's kind of one-time use, and uh, so you got to be really cognizant of when you use that. So this has been a special Kickstarter preview of Antediluvian Wars Extermination. If you think it's something that might be interesting to you and you want to learn more, head over to the Kickstarter page. I'm going to have the link below. You can read uh, more about the game, see some more of the artwork, read the rules, see some of the stretch goals, and anything related to the project. Now keep in mind that this game is fully developed and ready to go, which is something that uh, I really look for when I look at Kickstarters. I won't kickstart most things because they're not completed projects. I think you need to put the time into the project ahead of time before you have the right to ask people to loan you the money tax-free or, or interest-free. And in this case, ready to go, the Kickstarter is going to go towards maybe adding some more cards and uh, for the most part developing artwork for all the cards which costs a lot of money. Also note that I was not uh, paid for this preview nor have I been paid for any of my previews or reviews. The only thing is that the designer did send me this prototype copy so that I could check it out and create this video for you. So again, thanks for watching Left Hand Reviews. This has been a special Kickstarter preview of Antediluvian Wars Extermination. Uh, please follow me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google Plus, and lefthandreviews.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all at Gen Con.